Greetings in the name of Yahweh HaMashiach. At the end of today's broadcast, I'll have a mailing address, phone number, and website. Please stay tuned. Greetings in the name of Yahweh, the only name given among men, whereby we must be saved, and we do appreciate each and every one of you who has taken your time tuned in this program. And we believe it will be a real blessing to you. And we hope that you will study along with us. We get on a lot of stuff that's totally contrary to what's really being taught today. I believe that the early assembly taught the truth. And I believe that the assembly, the day and hour we're living in right now, In 2016, the church is so full of traditions and doctrines of men. But the creator of heaven and earth knows exactly where we're at. He knows what the church has been through. But it's a time that he has got to have an assembly teaching exactly what was given to the early assembly in the beginning. We're going back over to the book of St. John, one in one. And I say this quite a bit, that we have People that are oneness and trinity. And you're going to fit in one of those categories. And you're going to have to understand that when Trinitarian doctrine is being taught, it's being taught different than oneness. And when oneness is being taught, it's being taught different than Trinity. But the thing is, is that the oneness doctrine today is mixed with Trinity. You can't have one God and not have His name, and that's what's being taught. I said, you can't have a God and not know His name. And His name never was Jesus. And the Son's name never was Jesus. This is where tradition, doctrines. Now, I've been through all this. And I understand because when I first walked into this, I was confronted with it. I didn't jump on it. And it took me a while because at that particular time, you didn't hear this. So, but as I began to study and sought the creator of heaven and earth for the truth on this. See, I believe that the King James Bible is one of the best translations there is if you know how to study with it. But then when I begin to understand that it was impossible that the Messiah would have a different name than the Father, especially me being oneness and believing Acts 2.38. So what I had to actually do, I had to understand the Scriptures. Was one of the things that the creator of heaven and earth began to open up to me. 
I'm not talking about the writing of a New Testament. I'm talking about the Scripture from Genesis to Malachi. Going over to the book of St. John 1 and 1. Remember, when John, the book of John being written at this, at this particular time, the book of John, there are t- two dates that people believe when the book of St. John was written. Some believe that it was at the end of or around 70 A.D. Exact date, maybe, don't know, but the year around 70 A.D. And then some believe that Around 90 A.D., roughly about 98 A.D. Now, I myself, I hold to the 98 A.D., but regardless whether it was 70 A.D. or 98 A.D. or somewhere within that 90 A.D., anyhow. Regardless, when the book of John would have been written, the book of John, the book of, of St. John, 1st John, 3rd John, 2nd uh, John, 3rd John, and the book of Revelation, they claim was all written somewhere around pretty close to the same time. So, here in the book of 1 John, when we read, it says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Now, first of all, we have to understand that the book of John, when it's referring to the word, Word, W O R. D, when it's referring to the word, it's actually a Hebrew word that's called Devar. Or if you say it in Hebrew, meaning like the word, you would say Adavar. This word was had to be talking about something, first of all, from Genesis to Malachi. The writing of a New Testament is built off of the Word. Remember, let's say it this way. The writing of a New Testament would have the foundation be confirmed, be understood by the Word. Or say it this way from Genesis to Malachi, our overall scripture. The scripture. Usually what you will actually hear when you go back doing any kind of studying on certain things. So, and, and people are being taught that God has no name. And I, and I, I have to get on this about every week on certain things because people are not being not hearing this taught, especially in churches. They're not hearing this taught. The early assembly was not confused with all this. The early assembly knew who God was in the Old Testament. Because it understood the Scripture. But the day and hour you're living in right now, you have been taught that nobody 
knows the name that all the prophets gave witness to from Genesis to Malachi. Didn't know the one that Noah called on. Abraham called on. Adam and Eve knew. Didn't know the one that Isaac called on. Didn't know the name of the one that Jacob called on. Didn't know the name that Pharaoh was raised up for. The one that took the children of Israel through the wilderness. And that every sacrifice that was given for the children of Israel for sin... you're being taught that nobody knows that name. And what's the sad? People believe in it. People are believing it. People say nobody knows it. Or either they'll say, well, nobody can say it. Nobody can write it. It can't be spoken. And, and and they come up with all this kind of stuff and don't really realize that it is a tradition that started among Israel, among the Jewish people. When that Messiah walked on the face of this earth, he knew the name of his father, and he come in the name of his father. And he was called by the name of his father. Because it was the name that the New Testament gave witness to from the Old Testament. Or say it this way from Genesis to Malachi, are the scriptures. So we need to understand what it is saying when it says it. We need to understand when the book of Matthew. 22.32 says, I am the God of Abraham and the God of Isaac and the God of Jacob. God is not the God of the dead, but of the living. This is what it says in the book of Matthew 22.32. We need to understand what the Word is talking about when the Messiah said, Your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day and saw it and was glad. Now this was the Messiah talking. Abraham rejoiced to see my day. This is what the Messiah said. Referring it to himself. That Abraham rejoiced to see my day. Talking about the Messiah's day. In St. John 5, 56. I mean, excuse me, 8, 56. And was glad. It says, and he saw it and was glad. And in Verse 57 of St. John 8, 57. The Messiah says, Then said the Jews unto him, talking about the Messiah, Thou art not yet fifty years old, and hast thou seen Abraham? Now, you know that this had to be very dumbfounding to them. Here's a Messiah that started his ministry around 30 years of age. 
Now, some will say he walked on the face of this earth and had a ministry of three years. I'm not sure about that. But regardless, whether it was a year and a half, two years, or three, we know he was roughly around, somewhere around 33, give or take. And they're just really making a statement that they're, that you're not even yet 50 years old. And has thy seen Abraham? Because they can't understand who this really is. They're seeing an earthly robe of flesh talking. They don't understand that this earthly robe of flesh was the word in flesh. Now the word that was in flesh was not talking about what was from Matthew to the book of Revelations. But it was talking about what was from Genesis to Malachi. That was the word that was in flesh. Then in St. John 5.58, the next verse, the next verse says, And Yahweh said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Before Abraham was, I am. And of course, your King James will say, Jesus. It's impossible. It's, it's, it, it, it's impossible for the name of Jesus, Jesus to even be here. When it was not even in the original 1611 King James Bible that was written in 1611. So, and it definitely was impossible for, and the Messiah said, before Abraham was, I am. The only one that was the I am was Yahweh. That was the only I am. And the one that was I am was Yahweh. So over in the book of St. John 1 and 2, it says, The same was in the beginning with God. The same was in the beginning with God. What was in the beginning with God? It was the Word. Now if you keep this in mind in in St. John 1 and 2 and read this where it says the same was in the beginning with God. Sometimes I think you need to take verses and, and read them and dwell on them. Chew on them a little bit. And look at them. Look at them real good. And read them and keep reading them back and forth. Because they hook up perfect. It says the same was in the beginning with God. And remember, you're being taught that nobody knows 
the name of this God. That's what you're being taught. Ignorance teaches this. And I don't say that lightly because I've been as ignorant as anybody. But staying ignorant is one thing. Being ignorant and coming out of it. But staying ignorant is one thing. So I'm going to read 1 and 1 again and then 1 and 2 again. So we find in the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God. And the Word was God. Now, if I understand this right, and I'm reading this, I'm seeing two things here. I'm seeing God and the Word is what I'm seeing. So up to this point, if I just if I didn't have the book of St. John and, and I had never read it before, and all of a sudden I have John 1 and 1, and I haven't even never looked at John 1 and 2, 1 and 3, 1 and 4, 1 and 5, and so on. So I've got to look and I've got to understand that in the beginning was the Word, And the Word was with God. And the Word was God. So I've got two things here. i got the Word and God. So if the Word was with God in the beginning, and then find that it goes on, it says, and the Word was God, Then I have a God that the Word was that God, and God was that Word. And what is the name of that God? And this is what the church is being robbed of. When you look up the word name, name in Hebrew, you look up the word name, and you're going to find that in Hebrew, the word name is a Hebrew word that's called Shem. And you and a name actually is a memorial, it's a monument. And a name means something. I said a name means something. But they teach you And they teach, after they've gone through all this stuff about nobody really knows his name. And they run through all that kind of stuff. Can you really really imagine that they're teaching you that nobody knows the name of God in the Old Testament Because that's what's happened. That is really what's being taught. And I'm not getting as far as I want to. I've got to make some announcements. And that's really what has happened. This is why Jesus slipped in as being a name. Jesus slipped in being a name. Jesus slipped in being a name. Yeshua slipped in being a name. Yehoshua slipped in being a name. And all this kind of stuff. Because of this false teaching. 
but it looks like there are times come and gone. We're having a meeting up in Smithfield, Ohio. That's Smithfield, Ohio. The date is going to be December the 9th and 10th. The 9th falls on Friday. The 10th falls on a Saturday. The Friday service is at 6 o'clock p.m. And the Saturday service is going to be at 12 o'clock p.m. So the so the Friday night is 6 o'clock. The Saturday is at 12 o'clock p.m. In the noon time. It's at Yahweh Apostolic Ministries or Apostolic Church. 1271 Main Street. South, or excuse me, Smith. Field, Ohio. That's going to be December the 9th and 10th. December 9th and 10th. The 9th, which is Friday at 6 o'clock. The 10th, which is Saturday at 12 p.m. That's at Yahweh Apostolic Ministries. It's a church. That's 1271 Main Street. Smithfield, Ohio. That's 1271 Main Street. Smithfield, Ohio. Once again, that's Smithfield, Ohio. That's 1271 Main Street. Smithfield, Ohio, at Yahweh Apostolic Ministries, our church. The dates, the 9th and 10th, which is on Friday and Saturday. And it looks like there are times slipping by here. We come on at the same time every week. And the time that you listen to us now is... The time that we come on every week. And we hope that you'll call someone up and tell them about this program. It's all about trying to get people to study. And understand that the assembly has got to get back to the early assembly teaching. We're going to be going back over to the book of St. John. One in one. And usually we try to throw this in that we use a red letter edition King James Bible. Because the King James Bible is one of the best translations if you know how to study with it. And we do appreciate... Every one of you that's tuned in, and we hope that you will study alone with us. Because a lot of times when you have people just tuning in, have never heard this program, And when you're reading another name instead of the name of Jesus, where it will have the name of Jesus in that verse using the King James Bible, people don't really understand. So, if you happen to be one of them, and you hear us using something other than the name of Jesus, that's because the early assembly 2,000 years ago never used the name of Jesus. It's a fact. And this is why we're studying what we're studying. You have different doctrines being taught. You have doctrines like baptism. 
After 325 A.D., a lot of this stuff changed. When the apostles went off the scene, died out, were killed, they were false teaching being inserted into the assembly, but things did not happen overnight. <clears throat> Apostle Paul, even himself, he said that grievous wolves would, in, would enter in not sparing the flock. And Apostle Peter talks about as long as he was in the flesh, he would keep them in remembrance And you know, it's so important to understand. See, you can be so one-sided. I said be so one-sided about things. And really, that's what's happened today. In the day and hour that we're living in. We've been taught a one-sided message. I said we've been taught a one-sided message. You could not take baptism and you even using... Your King James Bible. I said using the King James Bible. You could not use it and prove that baptism was in the name of Jesus. You couldn't do it. And of course, people are going to say, "Well, it's in it's in my Bible." No, it's not in your Bible. You have what you have is something that's only been taught one sided. You could not prove. And back it up by going back to the New Testament. It's impossible to do it. I said it would be totally impossible to do it. But again, then people will say, well, does it really matter? Does it really matter? You better believe that it really matters what was taught by the apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers of the early assembly. But this is really about how far People have actually come. There's got to be something somewhere. Somehow. To cause people. To study the word of Yahweh. You need to pray. That. The creator of heaven and earth will open up your understanding. Because when Yahweh comes back, He's not going to come back just an assembly believing 
anything. I said, he's not going to come back with an assembly believing just anything. Just anything can be false teaching. I said, just anything can be false teaching. So, we better search and understand what the Bible is really saying. This is why I say, when you go back to baptism, you can not it's impossible to go back and have any other name other than what was written. Now, I don't know that That the word written means a whole lot to you. It should. I said it should. But the way people are taught today. It's, it's like people mock the truth. I said, people mock the truth. That's what people do. Once you begin to examine this and study this and search this out, When you study and examine the truth, that that is written. Do you know that Acts 2.38 is not written with Jesus' name in it? It's not written. No writing will back it up. Not that that was written does not back it up. Because of the way the way I'm saying it is the way that I understand. Because once you understand the word written. I said once you understand the word written. And examine it and study it. This is why. Over in St. John, where St. John 1 and 1, where we've been talking about the Word, this is not just talking about any Word. I said, this is not talking about just any Word. This is literally talking about from Genesis to Malachi. And understanding what it is saying. I said understanding what it is saying. This is why you can't just take And just really just quote anything, anytime, any way you want to. It has got to line up. 
I said it has got to, it has got to line up. Once you begin to understand this, it has got to line up to what the Word says. When you say the Word, everybody wants to jump to the New Testament and understand when you deal with the Word written, it has nothing to do with the New Testament. Give an example. When the Messiah said in Matthew 4, 7, it says, Yahweh said unto him, It is written again, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Now, when you examine what the Messiah actually is saying here, the Messiah is actually quoting from Deuteronomy 6.16. And the Messiah, his own self, is quoting, using the name of Yahweh. You go over to the book of Deuteronomy 6.16 and you check it out and you get this thing deep in your spirit about the word written. When the Messiah was dealing with the word written, he meant exactly what he was saying. It's a Hebrew word called katuv. Now in Hebrew there's different, it has root words. It could take you back to the word katab. And what it's talking about is something written. When the Messiah talked about when it was written, he was referring what was in the Old Testament. You cannot find the name of Jesus in what was written. I said in what was written. You remember this. When you come to the New Testament, such as you... Uh, that we have today and understand Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John what part of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John fits in and under the covenant of the old covenant and then what part of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John would fit in the New Testament then you have the book of Acts which all of it was written under the New Testament. All the way through, all the way to the book of Revelations. And understanding this, so the what was written is what the writing of the New Testament was based on. That's why it is so important on this. See, you could take and spend time. And this is why sometimes this broadcast it is it can become you know, and and I think a lot of times I think, well, you know, people are not taught this kind of stuff. They see the word written, they think it's talking about the book of Matthew. And it's not. When they see the word word such as in John 1 and 1, they think it's talking about the book of St. John. And it's not. So it's called rightly dividing and understanding the timing of all things. I said understanding the timing of all things. Matter of fact, I'm not going to say for sure right now, but I'm hoping 
maybe in the next broadcast, there's some things we're going to get on to about written and show you that you have really got to understand your Bible. Because basically, we have been taught wrong. We've been taught wrong on the foundation. We've been taught wrong on the coming. And what I'm saying about the coming, you'll never find a Jesus coming back. On the coming, when you go back to what was written, back to the Word, you'll never do it. You'll never find the plan of salvation in any other name other than the name of Yahweh in what was written or what was known as the Word. It just, it, it, you, you have no, you have no foundation. The foundation of the New Testament is what was written. So going over to the book of St. John 21, because my time is, look like is getting away from me, and I, I see some of this stuff and I think, well, people really needs, really need to study. There's a need to study, a need to understand. And here again, where we're going back to St. John, morning one, and we're going to see how far we can go. Before this broadcast goes out. So in St. John 1 and 1. And let's pray real quick. Father we thank you for your divine grace and mercy. And I ask you to open up the hearts. Of everyone that's listening to this broadcast. That you will put a burning within their spirit. And understand. What your word. Is saying to us. This day. Not what man's saying, not what a tradition's saying, not what some organization, denomination is saying, but what your word is saying. We ask it all in the name of Yahweh HaMashiach. Yahweh's name, Amen. St. John 1 1, it says, In the beginning was the word. Keep up with this word, W O R D. The word word here is a Hebrew word called Hadavar. And the Word was with God. Here's the word God. It's according, a lot of times the word God can be the word El. It can be the word Elohe. It can be the word Elohim. It's according to how it's used. But he's talking about God. And the Word was God. The Word was with God. Remember that. The Word was God. It starts off, in the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God. And the Word was God. If we stop right here and we look at this, who come first, the Word or God? Because when you look at this, the Word is God and God is His Word. And the Word was with God and God was the Word. But remember, they, you are being taught and robbed from knowing the truth of the name of the God of Israel that the prophets gave witness to for the plan of salvation in a New Testament. The foundation of Acts 2.38 Acts 2.38 was not based on Jesus, 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 Yeshua, Yahushua, or none of these other names. It was based strictly on what was written. It was based strictly on the Word. That's what your New Testament is based on. But you're being robbed. Just like me. I was being robbed. Till I opened and began to study. I was willing to open up and listen. To the word of Yahweh. 
and study. And once I did, I began to understand that true apostolic oneness is based on what is written. Based on the Word. I said based on the Word. Matter of fact, when you really take the word Word and the word written, you can have nothing written unless you have the Word. Because there had to be something to write. And the word and that that is written gives witness strictly to only one name that any sacrifice that was given to Israel would be used through the name of Yahweh. Now the reason why I keep saying Israel is because they had paganism paganism in the scripture. And Yahweh didn't want Israel get tied up with paganism with a false religion of no kind. So, this is why I will always talk about Israel that was given to Israel because the one that called Abraham out is the one that Believed in the true God. In other words, Israel believed in the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. You couldn't even prove Abraham, who Abraham is, and the God that Abraham served, you you are being taught totally different because of this. Abraham served Yahweh and Yahweh alone. That's what Abraham served. Abraham didn't serve a Jesus. He didn't serve a Jesus, a, a Yeshua, an Jesus, a Jesus, or anything else. It's impossible to take your Bible, go back to the God of Abraham and prove any other name other than the name of Yahweh. It's it's impossible to prove it. I could stop right now and not go no farther because it's impossible to do it. First of all, we only use one true name, and that is the name of Yahweh. Although the King James in the New Testament does call the Son, now the King James in the New Testament now does call the Son Jesus, but the original King James Bible known as a 1611, never did. It was called Azus. And then when you start backtracking this, you'll find out that you come through real quick about three names. That's just dealing with the word, the, the Greek Iazus, the Latin Greek Azus, and then the Latin Greek English Jesus. But what is is the real name. That's what's happened. That is really what has happened. First of all, matter of fact, I tell you what, before we go any further, let's um, let's do go over to the book of St. John again. Because I've got so much to get on in my time only allows me so much here. Okay, St. John 1 1, reading from the Red Letter Edition King James Bible. Because what we're what we're talking about is the word of Yahweh. In John 1 1, we've been talking about the word W O R D, which in the Hebrew is known as Devar R 
Hadavar meaning the word is how it would translate in English. And then you have the word God, which there are several different roots it goes to. El, Elohim, Elohi. It's just according to how it's used in a sentence. And, but when he gets down to it, the church and the majority of 99% of the people, if not a 100%, that tunes into this program usually has no idea unless they've, they've done some studying before. Now, I'm not saying they hadn't, but I'm just saying overall. It's more of a majority that doesn't know the name of the true God of Israel and that the early assembly nearly 2,000 years ago called on that name. And that name that they called on is the same name that they called the Son. Now this is really dumbfounding to people. Now I can understand you being Trinity and understanding that the Father and Son would have two different names. That's understandable. Now, it don't make it right, but it's understandable because that's a Trinitarian doctrine. Having three gods. Three gods. But at the same time, oneness. Believing in one God with three manifestations or three offices. But their doctrine of the oneness doctrine that's being taught today is really mixed with paganism of Trinitarian doctrine. I said mixed with Trinitarian doctrine. Acts 2.38 never used Jesus' name in it in the early assembly. But the difference is, the early assembly understood the name of God. Where today, the assembly, both being taught Trinity and what is supposed to be a oneness message, being taught, are not being taught that God had a name. I run upon this all the time. Dealing with people, talking to people. So it's really a critical thing to understand this and understanding the word word, W O R D. Because when you deal with the word word, you have to understand that the word word is referring back what is from Genesis to Malachi. This is really how important it is. Like when you deal with the word scripture. It is very important to understand what scripture is. I said what scripture is. Because, matter of fact, if you, and I, I really like reading this verse in St. John 5.39. The Messiah himself said, search the scriptures. Now the scriptures he's talking about has nothing to do with the New Testament. The New Testament would later be written after the death of Mashiach, after his resurrection, after the blood had been shed, after the Holy Spirit was poured out. It took, it was several years before these books were written. But the writing of the New Testament has foundation. And that foundation 
is what you'll find in your King James Bible as the word Scripture, such as here in St. John 5.39, where he says, Search the Scriptures. For in them you think you have eternal life. And they are they which testify of me. Talking about the Mashiach. And understanding this will help you a whole, 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 whole lot. This is why in, right here in St. John 1 and 1, where it says, In the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Verse 2, The same was in the beginning with God. Verse 3, All things were made by Him. And without him was not anything made that was made. Verse 4. In him was life. And the life was the light of men. Verse 5. And the light shineth in darkness. And the darkness comprehended it not. Verse 6, there was a man sent from God whose name was John. Verse 7, the same came for a witness to bear witness of the light. That all men through him might believe. He was not the light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. That, verse 9, that was the true light which lighteth every man. That cometh into the world. Verse 10. He was in the world. And the world was made by him. And the world knew him not. Now. Let me go on to verse 11. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. The name today, truthfully, is a great mystery to the church. And that is sad. I said the name today, an hour that we're living in, the name has become a great mystery to the church because you are being taught because the preachers have been taught it's like something handed down from father to son and then just keeps handing it down a tradition keeps being handed down and then tradition Denomination, organization is established by men, by something they have just had handed down to them. That's not true. Denomination, organization. The name has become a great mystery to the church, and that is very very, 
very sad. Because you are being taught that the name of Jesus was the Son of God. Impossible. 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 Totally impossible. I want to real quick go over to the book of First John. 4 and 2. I want to read you something. This is from from the book of First John now. And in First John the fourth chapter and the second but matter of fact let me read the first verse. It says of first John four one Beloved or beloved believe not every spirit but try the spirits whether they are of God because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Hereby know ye the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesseth not, that confesseth that, the King James Bible says Jesus Christ is impossible. Totally impossible. It's come in the flesh is of God. It is totally Totally, totally impossible that Jesus Christ could have ever name wise, name wise, could ever be called Jesus Christ. Now understand what this verse is saying. Hereby know ye the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesseth that. The Spirit of Yahweh does not confess that Jesus Christ's name. It does not confess that. You can't take your Bible and prove this. People can say, well, I'm listening to you and you're really talking about your own self. That's what you could say about me because I'm telling you that reading your King James Bible, it has Jesus Christ in it. But in the early assembly 2,000 years ago, never confessed that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Is of God. They never did. They'd have ever confessed Jesus Christ come in the flesh. It wouldn't have been of God. Now does Yahweh Almighty understand and know. What the church has been in. And been through. And all the teachings. And the Bible says. Try the spirits. Try the spirits. Believe not every spirit. In verse 1 of 1 John. 4 and 1. Now I'm going to let you turn this back on me right now. Because I'm here telling you. That the early assembly. Never confessed. That the Son of God was ever Jesus Christ. And the reason why, very simple. When you go to 1 John 4 1, where it says, Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits. 
whether they are of God because many false prophets are gone out into the world. I've been over this before. There is two dates to St. John or let me say it this way. Two dates of years of what year the book of John of 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 St. John, 1st John, 2nd John, 3rd John and the book of Revelations was written written all by the same apostle. So these books some will confess or say that history says 70 AD these books would have had to have been completed by 70 AD. Some will say around in the 90s like 98 AD these books were written. Now, regardless, they had to be written and they had to be finished before the Apostle John had died. Regardless. Here, in Saint, in First John four one, just like in First John, in Saint John one and one, but right here in Saint John four and one, John is writing this book to an early assembly nearly two thousand years ago. When John was still living at that time. Whether these books were completed at 70 A.D. Or were completed at 98 A.D. Regardless. They had to start being written. And then completed before John died. But the facts is, is that John was not writing this to an uh, assembly in 2016. He was writing this nearly 2,000 years ago. The apostle that walked and talked with the true Mashiach. John is writing this, this, matter of fact, let me real quick go over again to the book of St. John 539. Remember the same one that wrote Uh, St. John, 1st John, 2nd John, 3rd John, and the book of Revelation, the five books, I'm just going to say, without calling them out every time, the five books of John. Here in St. John 539, first of all, we're talking about confessing confessing Somebody coming in flesh. That's what we're talking about. As in 1 John 4, 2, where it says, Hereby know ye the Spirit of God, every spirit that confesseth that King James says Jesus Christ impossible is coming in the flesh is of God. It's impossible. John was not confessing that. He was confessing something that come from the Scripture. Let me read you something here in St. John 5.39. It says, search the Scriptures. He wasn't telling them to search St. John. He was telling them to search the Scriptures. 
St. John gives witness of the Mashiach in a robe of flesh, walking. It gives when he was born, when he had his ministry, and when he died. When he shed his blood. This is what Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John would be given witness to. When John referred and wrote what the Messiah said, when the Messiah himself said, Search the Scriptures. The Scriptures. They're known as Kitve Hakodash. What means, this is what you translate as Holy Scriptures are just the word kitab or, or kitve meaning scriptures and the word hakodash means holy of course King, of course St. John don't use the word holy here he just uses the word scripture or scriptures here now these scriptures he's talking about if you take St. John. Now let me let me finish reading here in Saint in Saint John five thirty nine. Search the scriptures. He's not talking about a writing of a New Testament. For in them you think you have eternal life. And they are they which testify of me. Keep up with that. They are they which testify of me. Talking about The Messiah. The Messiah was not Jesus Christ name-wise in the flesh. He was Yahweh Almighty in the flesh. He He was Yahweh HaMashiach in the flesh. You cannot take the scriptures from what John had given witness to and what you read in 1 John 4 2 where it says hereby know ye the spirit of God and also in 1 John The fourth chapter. Where he says, Beloved, believe not every spirit. Believe not every spirit. Believe not every spirit. But try the spirits. Whether they are of God. Because many false prophets are going out into the world. That, when you examine this, when John was saying, try the spirits. He was dealing strictly with one name. For you to understand who the Mashiach is and confess. Now understand, listen. I've been I've been raised in Pentecost, Apostolic Pentecost all my life. And I'm where right now where most of you are at right now. But it looks like that a time is just about come and gone. And I'm going to pick this back up in the next broadcast. But where you are right now, I've been there. I confess that Jesus Christ come in the robe of flesh at one time or come in flesh until I found out the true name of the creator of heaven and earth. And I switched over to what the truth said. It looks like that are times come and gone. We're having a meeting up in Southfield, Ohio. That's going to be December the 9th and 10th. That's Southfield, Ohio. That's 1271 Main Street, Southfield, Ohio. That's December the 9th and 10th. On the 9th, the timing is at 6 o'clock. And on the 10th, which is going to be a Saturday, is at 12 o'clock. It's at the Yahweh Apostolic Church or Yahweh Apostolic Ministries. That's at Southfield, Ohio. 
That's 1271 Main Street, Southfield, Ohio, December 9th and 10th. And it does look like that our time has once again come and gone. So till the next broadcast at the same time, we appreciate you. We love you. Shalom. The mailing address for Yahweh Ministries is 775 McDonald Road, Covington, Georgia, 30014, USA. 775 McDonald Road, Covington, Georgia, 30014, USA. Be sure and ask about the Father's Name CD and the free literature. Phone 770-784-0703, 770-784-0703. Our website is yahwahministries.org. That's y-a-h-w-a-h hyphen ministries dot o-r-g. y-a-h-w-a-h hyphen ministries dot o-r-g. Until next time, we bid you shalom.